everybody, I am Spectacular the Silver Stacular, and it is a rainy day here in Hudson, Florida. I am at Gold Galore Diamond Center Jewelers, and I want to talk to the owner, Johnny, who has invited us to come in. He's going to show us some really neat custom pieces that he has. This is not an advertisement. This is not something that Johnny pays me to do. It's stuff that I found interesting, and Johnny thought that you all would like to see it, so that's why I'm here. And uh, I think we're going to see some other things, too. Maybe some coins. He does have a small little coin section in here. So it's going to be fun. Stay with me as I talk to Johnny and his store, Gold Galore. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. All right, so I'm here with Johnny and Hudson at Gold Galore. is, is his store, right, Johnny? Yes. And what are you going to talk to us about today? Uh, we're going to get into a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, custom work that we do here. We'll show you some pictures of, uh, of some stuff that we make. Um, we'll talk about the custom process, um, hand-carved wax versus uh, computer-assisted design, and what the differences are and um, you know what it looks like for you the end customer uh, we're going to talk about lab grown diamonds versus natural mine diamonds versus moissanite um, and i'll show you a bunch of unique pieces uh, some really cool uh, stones uh, gonna keep it pretty interesting today so education and beauty mm -hmm. all in the same video i like that all right what are we going to start with well we might as well start right here start at the start I'm going to talk about uh, some lab-grown diamonds versus um, natural mine diamonds. And then I'll also tell you guys a little bit about moissanite. I don't know much about lab versus natural, but natural is very expensive in comparison? Well, yeah, because one took millions of years to form in the earth. And um, I, think the, I think the rule of thumb is there's like one or two tons of dirt and rock that have to be moved to find one carat of diamond. Jeez. So these are one carat diamonds. So they literally had to move, one, I think, I can't remember if it's one or two tons of dirt, but a ton of dirt, at least, to find that one stone. That's crazy. So that's what attributes to the cost of diamonds and why they're so expensive. The labor. The labor. Versus making them into a, you know, in a, in a lab, I guess. Which Correct. Is still, still some labor, right? I mean, it's oh, good. yeah, it's still some it's labor. Science. Expensive <laughs> machinery, millions and millions of dollars of R&D. Um, yeah, it took a lot to, to do that. So still, lab-grown diamonds do have value. Um, not as much as the natural. They're, they're quite a bit less now. When they first came out, I was dead set against them. The reason why is because uh, lab-grown diamonds in the beginning because it was such a new technology, uh, was still very expensive. You weren't, there wasn't much cost savings uh, buying um, lab-grown diamonds. But now they've come to earth. You got India, you got China making them, and uh, they're a lot more plentiful. Uh, so the price has come to earth, and now I can, you know, I can sell them to a customer. A customer comes in, they, you know, they they don't have, they want the super clean diamond. They want a VS Clarity G color diamond, but they they have like I won money. I'm like, maybe you might want to think about lab grown. You know, um, from my research, um, the Supreme Court has ruled that uh, lab grown diamonds are diamonds now. Our um, diamonds. Yeah, because I guess there was this big battle in the beginning uh, where they were saying that there, you know, some people were trying to, the, the natural mine diamond people were like, ooh, we see this kind of encroaching on our space. Uh, we better take them to court and see if we can shut them out. But it ultimately, they ruled that they are diamonds. Interesting. Now, you can tell them apart, right? No. You can't tell them apart? Nope. Oh, nope. no. You have to have special equipment. Or, um, I mean, th at the very least, you got to have a loop. Um, and... Uh, they're supposed to all be engraved on the girdle. The girdle is the outside edge of the stone. They're all supposed to be engraved um, where they'll say uh, LG, which stands for lab grown. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, you know, your uh, your man manufacturers in China and India, mm -hmm. they're not going to follow that to the T. No. There's a lot of people who are going to be dishonest. Can we put a lab grown next to a, like a, you yeah. know, a, a natural one and just see what they, if you know. Yeah, tell me which one is lab-grown and oh, which one Oh, you know, one is... I won't know. <laughs> I'm going to just take a total guess. 
I can't. I can't guess. <laughs> you can't. Uh, I can't guess. Yeah, I don't know. They, they both. I don't know. Uh, just for fun, I'm gonna guess. Uh, natural. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this whole ring is lab grown. The center stone is lab grown, and all the side stones are lab grown. And I also made it in 10 karat gold. I, I made this ring. You made it. Well, we we uh, we had it made, yes. Okay. Um, we we uh, picked the style. Uh, we had the stone loose, and I'm like, I want to mount this in a cool ring. But because it's lab grown, I wanted to keep the cost down. You know, normally I'm going to go with, like, this is probably 18 karat. Yeah, this ring's 18 karat. That's what we go with usually for our engagement rings. But I wanted to keep this low cost all the way around. So I chose lab grown diamonds on the side. I chose 10 karat white gold. So somebody can have a heck of a blingy ring. This this ring would be eight ten thousand dollars um uh, retail for natural. And what is this ring? I think it's I think it's thirty one hundred. So eight to ten thousand for a natural versus just what do you say three thirty one hundred thirty one hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So a third of the price. Can I see that one? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to buy it. I don't know if it would look good on me, but... It might good. It might look good, man. Nice pinky ring for you. I don't want to put it on. What if I turn invisible? <laughs> you ever watch that movie? No, what is that? Lord of the Rings. Oh, of course. <laughs> Duh. There you go. <laughs> that went right over my head. I've watched that about a thousand times. Uh, yeah, you're about my age group, so that's, that's right up our alley. <laughs> yeah. Here's uh, another lab grown. This one we set in 18 karat. We set this one a little, uh, a little. And see, like here, you see on our ticket, yeah. we have to even do that because we can't tell. We have to have a special tester just to be able to tell. Wow. So here we have uh, moissanite, diamond, and then lab grown. Okay, well, you want to go somebody that uh, is definitely not trying to pull the wool over your eye with lab grown versus natural, if you do have a preference. Just because, like you said, I mean, if you're not labeled the right way and somebody's not testing the right way, you could get uh, kind of scammed, right? Oh, yeah. You can and get scammed. And then you go one day this down the road, why... you want to sell it, and then uh, you find out for sure what it was. Well, this is why we are we educate people about buying jewelry online. Like, buying jewelry online can be quite dangerous. Um, even if people aren't outright trying to scam you, there's, like, hidden things that you, you might not know. Um, there's, there's this... Um, there's this uh, meme in the jewelry world, and it shows two diamonds right next to each other. One of them looks hazy, and the other one looks really clean and clear. And they say, uh, both of these diamonds graded as SI1G from, uh, from GIA, um, but yet they look completely different. And uh, the thing is, like, when you come to a place like us, and you, you deal with a, a little mom and pop shop, we hand pick all our diamonds. You know, somebody comes in with a hazy diamond, it's something we turn away. Now you buy your diamond online, you know, you're dealing with a huge corporation that is just trying to, you know, turn some bucks and doesn't care as much as we do. It's just the bottom line. So, you know, when you're dealing with a mom and pop shop, you, you know, you're not going to get your hazy diamonds. You're going to get your nice clean diamonds. And another uh, fun fact from what I understand is those big corporations online that sell diamonds, I won't mention, mention any names, but um, they get the leftovers. They don't get the, 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 the best picks. The independent jewelers do. Right. Well, they're so large, they don't have time to pick out things probably anyways. They're, yeah, that's exactly. Let me ask you this. Uh, with your products, let's say somebody you know buys it, maybe like five years down the road, they go, you know what? I'm over it. I don't want it anymore. Do you buy those things back? We do, we do. Yeah. Um, when it comes to diamonds, um, what we do is <clears throat> we actually offer, and a lot of independent stores do this, we will offer full back on an upgrade. So let's say somebody buys a one carat and then down the road they want a double size stone, they want a two carat. We'll give them exactly what they paid for this towards the two carat. Right on. Well, I think another thing to mention is like those bigger corporations, and we won't name names, uh, they don't buy back their own products. They I've do heard. not. <laughs> they do not. And so many times people come in, uh, you know, they bought the, they bought it from a mall store or something like that, and they have something they spent $4,000 on, and they come in here, and this thing is like I won, a crappy I won, uh, you know, 
tough to sell. And we're like, yeah, you know, 800 or a thousand dollars. And they're, they, they're like, oh man, I paid $4,000 for this. You guys are this and you guys are that. It's like, no man, they are like this. They are like that, <laughs> right? They just sold you a bill of goods with that diamond. And when you come in here, you're getting a kind of a dose of reality. And that happens with the online diamonds all the time. All the time people buy them and uh, it's not what it was cut out to be. Yeah, it's a shame. All right, now this thing right here, this made this loud beeping, it yelled at us. Why did it yell at us? What's going on? <laughs> well, it just shut off. So we're charging it back up to turn it back on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an auto shut off. But here, this is your moissanite tester, okay? Here you see it says diamond, so it'll blink green if it's a diamond, blue if it's a moissanite. Um, it actually tests for sapphire too, so we can actually have some fun with that too if you want. Um, but let's uh, test a diamond here. Oh, of course, it's going to blink blue. Uh, that's because they're, the diamond just needs, I need to just like rub the top off. Oh. There you go. There we go. Yeah, there's your, there's your diamond now. This is a moissanite, so this should test blue. Yeah. Blue. Yep. Yeah. Now, it won't differentiate. Oh, let me wipe the surface. It won't differentiate. Don't make me look bad. I have to edit all this out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, it will not differentiate between lab grown and uh, mined. See, green. Now, what are you wiping away when you do that? Well, there's like fingerprints and stuff that confuse the tester. So all I get needs to be clean. Yeah, just the stone needs to be clean, a clean surface to test. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. I got you. Very cool. Yeah. And how much does a machine like that cost? Uh, these uh, Gem Oro Ultrasound uh, Ultra testers are, uh, I think. 300 bucks. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So it's better just to go to some place that has it already then. And <laughs> oh yeah. Unless you're in the business or whatever you, if your jeweler doesn't have one of these and one of the lab grown diamond testers, I'd, uh, you know, just don't go. Well, maybe try to find one that has the tools and invest in their craft, you know, right on uh, real quick. You want to, you want to mention some of your bling? Cause this is sure. some stuff you have, right? Yeah, actually. Um, this is something I custom made like 10 years ago. I um, I really took to the Hopi maze. So that's the Hopi life maze. What is the Hopi life maze? I don't even know. Hopi Indians. Oh, okay. This is their, this is their life maze. All and right. I thought the symbology was really good. So you have this little guy right here. and um, oh, Don't move it. I got to just, I got to zoom in on this thing. Where's it at? There we go. I see the guy. Yeah. So he's looking back at that maze of life that he just walked through. And he's looking at the choices that he made and uh, whether or not they were good choices or bad choices. And we see that bad choices lead to death. And we have the dove that shows life, so the good choices lead to life. Ah. So I like to make symbolic jewelry and spiritual jewelry like that. Um, in fact, um, I even put on one side rubies to represent, you know, uh, life and blood and, you know, the, that sort of thing. Like, right. And then black, because that's a nice color to show, symbolize death black diamonds so yeah that's one piece that i made we got black diamonds too oh yeah yeah they're pretty much pure carbon pretty huh. much all they are uh but they're found with the diamond rough so they're diamonds yeah we were talking about how um the difference between cad and like hand carved so a little rundown on how jewelry is made for people who don't know i'm sure most of your crowd knows but I don't just know. in case <laughs> so everything starts with a wax Everything okay. starts with a wax. So you literally have somebody that's hand carving, a, a hand sculpting a wax, okay? Okay, so wax so, casting. Yes, that's how it's done. Okay. So this started out as a wax model. And you can see like that this is hand carved just by kind of the details and stuff, right? Where, where you have something like this, it's, you can tell it was made on a computer just gotcha. with how clean the lines are and stuff. There, um, some people, really appreciate the more hand carved stuff. Some people want the clean lines and like the perfect uh, aspects of it. So they go for CAD. I guess I'd be a hand carved kind of guy. I really do like the hand carved approach. Mm -hmm. Is that more expensive? Mm, sometimes, depends <laughs> on what we're carving. Gotcha. So yeah, if you're carving something like this, yeah, CAD would be cheaper. Um, because you know, it's not easy to carve a little skull like that. What are we talking price wise on these? If you had to. Well, this is 22 karat gold. This is. This is a lot of weight. I mean, I think this is 20 grams of of, of 22 karat gold. Um, plus you have a five carat, that's a blue zircon. Not to be confused with zirconia, 
This is the December birthstone. That's why I'm wearing it. Ah. Um, but not to be confused with zirconia. Um, this is a natural stone. Um, it has diamond-like characteristics. You see how it has that kind of like scintillation like a diamond does, like those rainbow colors coming out of it? That I has to do that. with the growth structure of the crystal. Um, and so this has a similar growth structure, crystal uh, crystallization that a diamond has. So it's gonna have a sparkle kind of like a diamond does. And um, it's also why they figured out how to synthesize them. Uh, zircons, they, they, that's how they make zirconia. They synthesize zircon. And uh, it has that similar diamond kind of kind of structure, so zirconia sparkles. I know rabbit trail, but um, right <laughs> so something like this um, probably would cost probably the four to five thousand dollar ballpark. That's it. I kind of thought more. Yeah, I mean, we don't we're not getting rich on stuff, you know. We're we enjoy doing this. Um, we don't have like a huge profit margin on stuff like this. Um, that's cool. Yeah, we, like we just lot. really enjoy this part of our business. But that is your baby. That's on your finger. Yes. Probably not really trying to sell that. Not trying to sell this one, but I can make you one like it. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. What about what about the, the dangly fish? Oh, yeah. So this is a vintage piece. Um, it actually it, moves. Yeah, it moves. Um, I bought this from a customer over the counter. Each one of these little things is like this like ring. And there's a smaller ring and a smaller ring and a smaller ring. And that's all pieced together and riveted together. That's how they made this. That is fascinating. And uh, the most fascinating thing about this piece is the trap door. Oh. What do we have a trap door for? Yeah, what's that used for, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, at first I thought, okay, 70s, 80s, they probably put some nose candy in there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but then I talked to somebody who knew about these and he's like, no, stupid. It's for snuff. So they used to put snuff inside these. People would put their like little baggie in there with some snuff. Oh, okay. And and the for those who don't know what snuff is, I really didn't. Snuff is uh, tobacco yeah. that you snort. Tobacco. Yep. You would actually put it here in 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 this like little po pocket of your palm or whatever, and and snuff it up for a little uh, a little jolt of nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this fish held your snuff. <laughs> That's a cool fish. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And uh, 22 carat. No big deal. 22 we, carat. We like heavy some. Stuff. We like the higher, the higher, uh, higher grade gold around here. I tell you a story real quick. Sure. A uh, buddy of mine's like, "Hey, can you sell this necklace for me?" He's like, "I know you have connections. Can you sell this necklace?" And it was a 10 carat necklace. I think at like 21, 22 inches. And uh, he's like, "I paid. I think he's paid like 12, 1300 dollars for it." And I'm like, "Listen, bro. Like, what you paid for it is probably not what you're gonna get back for it." And then I took it to a uh, you know a jewelry store, and they're like, yeah, it's about worth you know a little less than five hundred dollars worth of gold. And the guy didn't want to sell it because you know he paid twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for it. But I think you probably get that a lot in here too, where people pay whatever they pay for the jewelry, and then they go to try to sell it for like gold, mm -hmm. and they don't that get what happen, they expect. That does happen, especially when you when you visit the malls. Unfortunately, the malls they have really high rent. Yeah. And uh, you know they have expensive staff. Um, with suits <laughs> and you're paying for that when you go to those places um, you know you, what you got to do the best way to to buy jewelry is you find a little mom and pop shop that you trust in your area or even if it's not an area place like this where you know you you go online and you read the reviews you know um, we have between Facebook and Google I think over 200 reviews and uh, you can see like the you know their reputation and whatnot and that's how you don't get screwed, yeah. right? Sure. Um, and you will ship out, right? Yes, absolutely. You'll ship out? Absolutely. I have for some of the customers uh, that called me from the previous videos. And you're cool with me putting this back on YouTube for people to see, right? So absolutely. So people that are across the country could see it. And I'll put some information uh, from your shop down in the description of the video so they can go down there and check out where you are in case they did find something you like or, or they like rather. Or and want uh, something custom made. Custom made. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I would be all about. Some mm -hmm. nice custom made I'm stuff. I'm actually going to give you some pictures and videos uh, that you can um, overlay and show like some of the custom work that we do. We're actually making an octopus right now. Um, and actually I'll grab the stone in a minute. It's an opal that we're setting in the octopus and I'll show you like the whole process. I found this picture on, um, on Google and I was like, okay, I have this opal. I want to, I want to mount this opal in an, in an octopus. So we use this as an example. And, uh, 
the, oh, the, the octopus is actually in transit right now, but I can show you a video of it. First off, this is the CAD. This is what CAD looks like. This is actually a um, visual represent, representation of what it's going to look like. But that's actually computer-assisted design rendering right there. Oh, okay. So it's that's not... not the actual piece. Oh, wow. Technology, huh? Technology, man. It looks real, right? Yeah. All right, so now you have galaxy diamonds? Yeah, that's what we call them. Um, I mean, they're basically just highly, heavily included diamonds. There's lots of natural inclusions in them. But they're really cool because they kind of have like a mossy-like appearance on the inside. They're very natural. A lot of people love these. As a guy, I like this diamond better because it's darker. Um, I, I don't know. I feel some kind of way about, you it's know. less blingy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That dark look. As you can see, they're very large stones. So they're for the people who like, you know, something that is got some presence on their finger. Yeah. Um, they like the natural aspect of having its own fingerprint inside, its own naturalness. Uh, and the reason we call them galaxy diamonds is because it looks like like a little constellation of stars on the inside with all those inclusions and stuff. Try to get a nice up close on it. Yeah, man. They're cool. I like the dark look. I'm a fan. See this one. Oh wow, you can see them in there. That's cool, Johnny. Yeah, and uh, you know, you go with a um, a white stone that size, you're talking big bucks. Um, the most expensive one here is this one, and uh, this one is about four thousand. Okay. I mean, you're talking big bucks if it's a white stone. Just throw out a imaginary number. Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You get something clean. Sure. Wow. So much cheaper to go that route. And it's rose gold. And I like it better, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's super cool, man. Not that diamonds aren't cool, but like, I don't know, just for me, something darker kind of seems right. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. We'll get into the other opals and stuff soon, but I wanted to show you some neat stuff that we like to carry here. So this is boulder opal. Boulder opal. Yeah, so you've got, this is the rock they find opal in. Now what do you do? You just you carry it just like that. I carry then... it like this, and then people will have custom jewelry made out of it. Okay. Like we might put a rim of gold around it, maybe a flower on top. Like this one would actually be really cool to turn into a pineapple. Okay. Have like a pineapple top coming out of it. Sure. Um, you know, and you have like different ideas. This would be another one that would be good for that. But do you see the see the the green and blue uh, fire inside that? Oh yeah. It's like hidden pockets of color and fire inside like a just a drab brown stone i think they're so cool they are cool can i can i touch one of these sure of course these are boulder opal boulder opal I've never had a boulder opal in my hand before well i'm about to put a huge boulder opal in here oh jeez. that green sparkle man the flashes are so cool how about this this one let me put this down that's a turtle Yes, it's a boulder opal. And they made a whole turtle. They made a whole, you gotta feel how heavy this is, dude. All right, well, let me see. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like a 100 ounce bar. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, so that's all That's all carved out of boulder opal. That's fantastic. You see the veins of it in there. Almost looks like rivers in like dirt almost, you know? Yeah, man, that's awesome. That's some skill. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll look at some other some of these other pieces. So I actually had an idea on this piece. I think it would be really cool to put something here. Whatever somebody wanted, like a, like a, I like this, uh, well, you notice with my jewelry, it's, we have a line here, it's called skull and lotus, mm -hmm. where we, we put a skull and a lotus. Usually the, the lotus is growing out of the skull and it just symbolizes life, life comes from death, you know, the circle of life and whatnot. So I think it would be really cool to have a uh, skull and lotus here on the piece and then have like all that below it. Yeah, man, that would be cool. I like that you're an idea guy. You have ideas. I do, I'm loaded with ideas. Look at that, look That's, at the blue. Yeah, man, a little, little flashes of green here and there uh -huh. on the right, yeah. But really strong blue fire. I love it. So there's tons of stuff we can do with, with uh, things like Only that. Only $200, so actually Boulder Ripple's not that expensive. No, it's not that expensive. You can get a big piece and it's not that not that high. Like this one is 200 as well. Those are cool. This one is, this one has a lot going on in the back too. 
I won't peel, peel a sticker, but it's got a lot going on but on both sides. Beautiful. This one's also 200 because it has a lot more fire and a lot more stuff going on. And this one must be free. I don't have a sticker on it. <laughs> free. <laughs> you could... It's free for me, at least. Almost like a, like a little <laughs> shark's tooth kind of looking similar. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I like it a lot, man. So here's another cool thing. This is this is called a dendritic agate. Dendritic agate? And you put a cross into it. No, no, I didn't put a cross into it. That's natural. A That's natural a natural cross. inclusion that's found in that stone. Wow. So what they did is what, whoever dug this up saw the cross in it and was like, oh, that's cool. Let's, uh, let's. Let's actually cut around it, and so that way the cross is the center of the piece. That is neat. And there's there. This isn't the only one. Like they find a lot of the dendritic agates. They find a lot with the crosses. So you'll find these stones with the crosses in them. What does something like that cost? Uh, I'm selling this for two fifty. Two fifty. That's cheap. You put that in a nice little bezel. Yep, nice little bezel. You got a nice little religious piece, and it's not too expensive. And it's so cool that, you know, you could say God put that cross in there. Yeah. You know? It reminds me of the catfish. You ever see the catfish bones where it has, like, the natural cross and stuff? Oh, I have. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, what, the uh, sand dollars. Yeah. They yeah, have, yeah. like, the birds the, in the them. The little, yeah, the uh, doves, right? Yep, the doves, exactly. It's cool stuff. And then, so we have uh, some other cool stuff here. This is called... Um, watermelon tourmaline. Well, why do they call it watermelon? Well, because it, it looks just, it looks like, a just like a watermelon. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I actually had an idea of, uh, of actually making a gold half watermelon and placing that in it. So that way you look at the, you know, the, the slice of watermelon or whatever, like the half of watermelon, uh -huh. and you have it actually looks like a watermelon inside. I like that. That's really neat. So if you're a big fan of watermelon, that might be the piece for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? We have uh, some more tour uh, tourmaline. This one's all pink. It's so, a slice of tourmaline. So pink melon. Yeah. <laughs> no green. That's cool. This is a pretty unique piece. This is called Demille uh, Turquoise. It's amazing how nature just makes this stuff, huh? It is. Yep. Um, this, this is, usually turquoise is blue, so this is like a really nice like neon green. Um, so this is a very special... Uh, yeah, it's like a turtle shell. That looks really neat. Yeah. And actually, I think these are found in Arizona. That's where they uh, mine these from. So it's not found, like, in very many places, this type of tourmaline. Huh. Or tourmaline. Turquoise, rather. So many different stones were thrown around. Yeah. Um, speaking of tourmaline, there's a nice bicolor. They call that bicolor tourmaline. Pink and white. I don't have a lot to say about this, John, just because I don't know anything about it. So I don't think I'm uninterested. Yeah. It's just, these are cool to me. Yeah, yeah. that's neat. Stones are awesome, man. Here's a uh, natural... I can imagine my wife and kids would be like, oh, I want this one, I want that. <laughs> this is a natural uncut diamond. Uncut diamond? Yeah. You find that in the parking lot, you probably just, like, kick it. Yeah, it looks like concrete, like no real big <laughs> deal. But that is uncut diamond. Uncut diamond. And so, so they would just cut that up and try to make something pretty out of it. Well, I think something like this, um, somebody would enjoy the natural aspect of it, sort of like those galaxy diamonds. Yeah. And they would design a piece around it, you know? Like a like the octopus thing, like the octopus holding it or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever kind of thing that you like. You know, you could you can make all kinds of stuff from this stuff. Very cool. And uh, a couple more tourmalines. These are uh, green and bicolor tourmalines. I like this one because of how long it is. You I like how them? you have them out, uh, and then people can go like, hey, I want that, but this is what I want to do with it. Yep. Or you can give them your suggestions. Check out that color. Dark, huh? Blue on one side, which is that uh, indicolite color, and then uh, hey, green on the other language. side. Watch your language. This is a kid show. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's funny. A lot of jewelers do joke about that. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Cool stuff, Johnny. Yeah. I like how you do your shop, man. Thank you. People buying the coins like crazy? I do well with uh, the foreign, like like the Australian, the British, the, um, what do they call those? The uh, Philharmonics, the Canadians. Uh, my customers really like those because they're from other parts of the world and they're one ounce of silver. Uh, it's been really hard to keep those in stock, man. They just, as soon as I get them in, they're gone. That's cool. 
I like that you have some coins in the uh, jewelry shop. Yeah, you got to do a little it, variety. Man. I'm a, I mean, I'm a coin guy. I love coins. People probably come in and they, you know, want to sell you some stuff too, right? And they have these coins, and you're like, yeah, I'll buy that too. Why not? Well, just the fact that, yeah, that, and just the fact that I have some coins out. You know, people are like, oh, you buy coins too? I'm like, yeah, sure do. Little Aztec calendar. Yeah. Those are very popular. Little bullion piece. Mm-hmm. Cool. Horse eagles, the, the standard stuff. This is the type of stuff I do well with. I had a bunch of these before Christmas and sold them, like to all one, all to one guy. All the Chinese stuff. Yep. I stopped buying Chinese stuff. I can't. Not, not Chinese. It's hard to buy no Chinese things, but Chinese bullion I, I don't play with personally. Well, the nice thing about this is it's old. You know, it's like yeah. well, actually, this one ain't very old, is it? But I wouldn't buy them from China. But if they're floating around in the yeah. uh, market already, I'm like, it's already been purchased. So I understand the allure to the Chinese, you know, uh, panda coin because. They do change the design every single year, so you get something new to look at. You know, it's kind of cool. I don't like how they're under an ounce now. I think it's a weird thing for them to Are do. They? Yeah, it's not quite an ounce. It's like if you look at it, it's uh, see thirty grams. Oh wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, they went Boy, that they, way, but they still they still uh, charge well over the ounce price for mm. them. <laughs> I pay. I bought it as an ounce from a dealer. That's and that's fine because that's what they kind of you know the premium on these things go for. Oh, that's interesting. I'm glad you you pointed that out. I didn't you realize. Got, uh, see, you get some bars there. That's cool stuff, man. And you got some old Morgans and stuff in there. Yep, got some. Very cool. See, I promised my people that I would show them some coins at a jewelry store, and they're probably like, "No way, this that's impossible." <laughs> so here it goes. No gold, huh? Sold out. Sold out. Yeah, I mean, I had I had some sold right away. Oh, that's your personal favorite stuff, right there, right? Yeah, I love the, the I love the ancient stuff. I used to have a huge collection. I had gold Lesbos, Electrum. I had tons and tons. I had all kinds of the whole Roman collection, um, and it all sold eventually. And now I got to start collecting it again. Anybody out there wants to sell me some? Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool, Johnny. Thanks for showing this. No problem. Appreciate it. What are these uh, little contraptions here? So um, this is something that we um, actually, the same guy who carved this, carved this. So I'll tell you the whole story about how this came about. I have a, a friend of mine that I buy stones from. His name is Jack Hawk. And he uh, carved this and I had seen it and I was like, dude, I have to have that. This is a dragon heart carved from, wait for it, dragon skin agate dragon skin agate. yeah so you see like the outside of the stone how it's got that like kind of like scales yes. that's why they call it dragon skin agate so when i got that stone i'm like what i, I gotta have the stone but what am i gonna put it in and i was like i got it michael the archangel with the dragon heart in his hand he rips the heart right out of satan right right from the bible yeah yeah so now you might be interested in knowing what what this metal is yeah why is it black so this is this is a natural japanese art form uh, I should not, an ancient Japanese art form. It's called shikudo. And what shikudo is, is actually a mix of gold, 7% gold, silver, and copper. Okay. And it naturally oxidizes and turns black like that. Just like that, huh? Yep. That is dark. And what do they do? They just kind of like... Uh chip off some of the oxidation or whatever no actually to... that is that is 22 karat gold wire that ah. they actually fuse on top of it okay to give like the accents of the you know the head the the necklace the belt the sword and so on yeah that's cool yeah so that's a this is a one-of-a-kind piece you'll never see another one like it is it heavy feel it oh, it's okay. about 50 60 grams oh yeah, it's nice that's a cool piece we like uh, Michael. And what I'm giving with the piece, I'm giving uh, a few more of Jack Hawk's um, artwork. This is a dragon eye carved out of the dragon skin agate. That is cool looking. And then also, you'll have to hold this up to the light to see it. But, uh, oh, actually, I could put my phone behind it so you can see it. Technology, huh? Technology. I don't know if you can see it or not. There, that's probably better. It's a dragon carved in the back of a rose quartz. It sure is a dragon. And that was all carved with dental tools. Dental tools carved this in there. How long did that take, you wonder, huh? The guy is pretty good at what he does. Yeah. He, uh, he's, this is what he does, and he's his stuff is awesome. I have one more Jack Hawk piece to show you. The hand-done stuff is just so fascinating to me. We just, it's like we don't see hand-done stuff anymore these days everything's just like done with just 
conveyor belts, you know what I mean? This, this is fantastic. So you have um, up on a mountain, a bonsai tree with a ladder going up it and a moon. That's crazy. That would look really cool in a pendant. I'll take it away from the light real quick. It's gone. Back to the light. I like that. A little hidden thing, you know? Mm -hmm. A little talking piece. Exactly. Very cool. Yep. What, what, what we got over here? Ah, so this is um, from a company I deal with. They're actually out of Tampa. Uh, they manufacture stuff like this. This is all sterling silver dragon. Surely. It could be a pendant. It could be a piece for the cabinet. Um, it could be part of your metals collection. I see like a nice pen back on it. Yep. It can be used as a pin on like a biker jacket or something like that. That's got to be a It's also piece. obviously a necklace. Yeah, feel it. Oh, yeah, that's chunky. Yeah, I think that'll look good on you. You think so? Yeah, I think you should rock that. All right. I don't know. I'm going to pass for now. Oh, are you going to pass for now? Okay. Yeah, but it's All cool right. though. Well, maybe one of your... I would put that in like, you know, with the collection for sure. You know, I don't know if I'd wear it because then you're asking for trouble right there. I mean, imagine that in your, in your intro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, never been seen before. <laughs> well, at least it'll be in your video now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we've got a couple uh, Damascus knives. Oh, we like Damascus. You ever watch that show uh, Forged in Fire? Mm, yes, I have seen a couple episodes. Tell you what, man, I've watched that, and I just I wanted to have like a, my forge in my garage after watching that thing, but kind of pricey. You got to have more skill than just somebody who just who buys the equipment. Well, the nice thing about these is they're manufactured in North Carolina, so cool. Yeah, so it's not like your Chinese blades. These are nice blades, Real full deal. tang, uh, inlaid um, turquoise uh, handle. Pretty cool piece. Yeah, they went to town. Pretty sharp. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be stabbed by it. That's cool. What's something like that go for? <laughs> oh, these are two ninety nine. Oh, it's cheap for a nice piece of damask. It's handmade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now with the saltwater coral tanks, you don't turn the lights on all day long. They're on for a certain cycle. So. Well, these lights are brand new. We don't have any corals in here yet. Yeah. Um, but we're getting ready to. So that's why we have the lights kind of mounted and getting ready to be, uh, getting ready to be turned on. Gotcha. Uh, but this tank will look like this. It'll just be a very large version of this with all the corals and stuff in there. We're gonna do put uh, hard coral in here. Is that the? I'm the gonna goal? put hard and soft coral. Okay. These lights will. These are awesome lights. The LED. Like Radeon. Yeah. Um, these lights will grow SPS and LPS. So. Remember back in the day, man, you had to have metal halide if you wanted to go ahead and get any kind of hard coral grown in there. Now That's right. with LED technology, you can just do whatever you want to do. Yeah, at first LED wasn't very good, but uh, now it is. Now yeah. it's uh, it's great for growing coral. Most most of your hobbyists are using it, uh, mainly because uh, they don't put out much heat, and um, well, because they're reliable, they last ten years. Um, there's just so many benefits going with LED now. Yeah, right on. And much cheaper, really, when you consider everything, the replacement cost versus the metal halide, oh, which is super remember, expensive. like, those big reflectors you had to have for the oh, metal yeah. halide, you know? Like, Heat up your entire house with oh, that yeah. stuff you and your energy have, bill. The energy bill went through the roof. That's another thing, the energy bill. Yeah. yeah Everybody's man. dealing with energy. I love a, I love a good saltwater fish tank. Me too. Does every kid that comes in here call that thing Nemo? Yep. <laughs> yep. And they're like, what is that thing? Little, uh, which one? This guy right here. Oh, the coral, coral uh, banded. The coral banded shrimp. Yep. Yeah. They're like, what is that? <laughs> right on. Beautiful. Thanks. Opal collection is always growing. We always have new stuff. This is all Andamuka opal, which is the location in Australia where it comes from. This is the uh, this is what the landscape looks like there. This is a piece of opal from Andamuka. So just, uh, just a big slab. Just a big slab, and they would cut the opal out of this. But for whatever reason, they decided to, for demonstration purposes, I guess, uh, to not cut that up. I'd, I'd have that as like a nice shelf piece. I like Isn't that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's really cool. Really, really neat. After you told me about some opal, man, I've just, I've been hooked. I've been really addicted. So let's talk a little bit, a little more education on opal. So you have solid opal, you have doublet, you have mosaic, you have triplet. You have synthetic, um, so and you have different uh, regions. You also have matrix opal. So here we'll start off with this. This is solid opal. I saw that you got to be careful because I guess there's some fake opal out there too. Yeah, and I'm going to show you some of that because oh, no. I actually have a piece for okay. demonstration purposes. So this is your solid Andamuka opal. You notice how it's white? 
Yeah. Well, that's because it doesn't have a backing on it. This right. is a solid piece. Okay. This piece, not to not not that there's anything wrong with this. This is what's called a doublet. So you remember the boulder opal stuff? Yep. That's a piece of that tiger iron on the back. And that's what what it looks like when you put um, some black background behind a solid opal. This is basically a slice of opal and then a slice of the tiger iron. Yeah. And so I can keep, change it a little bit, huh? Yes, and it keeps the cost down because this piece, this like black opal like this, you're talking ten grand. Ten thousand dollars. Oh yeah, all day long, maybe more. And this, even this is forty five hundred. It's amazing. What uh this is a solid opal. Now this piece is sixty two fifty. What causes it to have these colorations? Silica. Silica. There's like little tiny microscopic silica silica orbs. And the and um what I is think that, like it plants? has plants? Like dead plants and stuff? So there's um in the ground you have microtubules and over the years rain causes silica from the plants to wash down these microtubules. Wow. And they end up in a pocket. And the pocket is your opal. Jeez. Here's a, a shell that was fossilized and actually is opalized. So this, this shell had a micro, some microtubules going to it that washed the silica and infused into the rock over millions of years. Pretty amazing. Pretty cool. So yeah, you have your solid opal, you have your doublet. You also have what's called triplet. Now triplet would be like this, but it would have like a dome over it. And it's called triplet because it's three slices. It's a slice of tiger iron in the back, slice of opal in the middle, and a slice of quartz over the top, and that domes it. So this is actually a triplet. In the back you have the, the it's this is basic this is a manufactured opal. This is um, probably resin or something like that in the back. And then it's domed with with your quartz. And then if you look on the inside, you'll see, if you can zoom in really good, you'll see it's a mosaic. It's tons of little pieces of opal all pieced together. Okay. It's like some scraps. Yes. And they mosaic it together. Now, this is not fake opal. It's, this is manufactured. It's manufactured. Okay. Yeah. So it's not, it's not naturally, you know, made from, you know, nature. Right. Okay. Exactly. All right, gotcha, gotcha. So um, there is some that is um, actually like, I think this, no, this is actually natural. Um, but you'll see a lot of pieces like this. If the color is like too uniform and too perfect, uh, it's probably what's known as opalite, um, which is manufactured opal. Gotcha. They actually s cause that silica infusion in a lab. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like the natural stuff. I like the natural stuff too. Check these guys out. I'm going to make some custom pieces out of these. Some more skull and lotus designs. Skulls, huh? Yeah. These are um, lightning ridge. Carved into a skull from opal. It's amazing. Very cool. What, mm -hmm. is, this, what is this piece down here? This so piece this is, is so bright. Like that piece on this? it right there, it's like, it's like glows almost. So this is my skull and lotus line. There you go, there's some fake opal right there. That's a little tiny bit. The teeth are actual um, opal light. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't like calling it fake opal, it's opal light. It should be a little nicer to it. Uh, and then the center of the flower has some opal light in it. Rose quartz, um, that is I think antler. The, the skull part is made of antler. Wow, man. And then that's all turquoise around there. All these are just d separate pieces cut out and then all pieced together. It's called an intaglio. That's a pretty piece. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. I mean, I don't know that it would suit me to wear that. No. But like on a, on a woman, that would look really pretty. Really would. Yeah, really yeah. Really would. And then, of course, you have opal from different parts of the world. These are opals. This is Mexican fire opal. This Mexican orange. Mexican fire. Does that mean it actually comes from Mexico? Yes. Okay. We have some in the United States, too, right? Some places? Uh, there is, but it's not the best stuff. It's not like uh, Australia's. No. Or, uh, Austra nobody can touch Australia. Pretty, though. And then you have some Ethiopian opal. Okay. Ethiopian. These are known as hydrophane opals. They're not quite as durable. You don't, you don't want to get them in a hot tub. They'll turn yellow on you. Oh, really? But if you're careful and you wear them carefully um, and you don't sleep in them and you treat them good, they'll last you forever. And they're really pretty. They got a lot of fire. And they're a, wow, lot, a lot less expensive than Australian. Okay. What's like the... Uh cleaning or the care procedure of like some of this opal soap here. and water soap dove and water. soap and uh actually you want to oil like you don't have to oil the australian stuff as much 
but you definitely want to oil. Um, you can use baby oil on the on the um, Ethiopian stuff. Here's some more Ethiopian. These are faceted. A little variety there, I like that. Cool. Little pieces could go in earrings, whatever. Earrings, yeah, whatever we want to make. Stuff you can make. Oh, and here's a cool piece. This is called a matrix opal. So this opal was dead and lifeless until, good? Uh, this, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just adjusting. <laughs> this, this piece was uh, dead and lifeless until they put it in a bath of, I think it's sulfuric acid mm -hmm. and sugar water. Okay. And that brought all that life out on, in it. Now this is a solid opal. Yeah, wow. But it's, a, it's called a matrix opal. And that's pretty. I'm glad they could revive it. Yeah. <laughs> so some, some opal is also treated. You got to know the difference. You got to know what you're looking at. Because some people will sell treated as natural. You know, some people will sell synthetic as natural. This is why you want to go to, again, a local jeweler. That knows what they're doing. Knows okay. what they're doing and they're honest. Have a good reputation. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Johnny. I greatly appreciate you showing us your shop and uh, taking us around. Uh, anything you want to say before you go? Well, just wanted to thank those who had reached out to me and um, from my other videos. And uh, just shout out to you. And uh, like I said, if you guys need anything, you need custom work, you need anything done, you can mail us repairs. Um, anything you need done, we, uh, we're happy to work with you. We ship, we're insured, uh, in business almost 40 years. So appreciate you. Thank you, Johnny. And again, I'll have his information down in the description below the video. So anybody can check that out. And Johnny, thanks a lot. Appreciate thanks. you. Thanks, always fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.